Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, it's a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business, be in business for yourself, work out of your home, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you've benefited in your life, from nutritional supplements. Now pay it forward. Help other folks. Those of you guys listening to this program, you're on the upper edge. You're you're on the the leading edge when it comes to nutritional supplementation and taking care of your own health business. 99, well, 90% of Americans or maybe 80% of Americans don't have any idea of the power that is available to them via nutritional, nutrition and nutritional supplementation, via lifestyle strategies, nutrition, and nutritional supplementation. There will be a lot less people on prescription medicine if we really understood how to leverage, if as a culture we really understood how to leverage, as a society if we really understood how to leverage the power of these simple, relatively inexpensive, easy at-home strategies for staying healthy, including getting on a good nutritional supplement program like the one you find in the Healthy Start Pack and all the longevity products which you can find about find out all about at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Transdermal Sea Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about the cell, the membrane, the covering on the cell. Who knew that this little entity that's one one hundredth the size of a head of a pin could be so complicated, so multi, multi-composited, made up of so many parts, inside and outside, The outside of the cell is just as complex as the inside of the cell. Of course, there's no real outside of the cell that's separate from the rest of the body. As we said yesterday, it's all kind of mashed together, even though we talk about it as cells and stuff. The bridge between the cells and the stuff is this sugar coating called the glycocalyx. It itself is multifunctional. It acts like an ID badge. Immune system cells are constantly looking for bad, bad glycocalyx or a glycocalyx that doesn't belong or a broken glycocalyx, when the immune system sees a broken glycocalyx or a disturbed glycocalyx, 
it activates the immune, uh, the immune system becomes activated. The inflammatory system becomes activated. If that disturbed glycocalyx is part of, say, pollen, you'll have an immune response to pollen. If that disturbed glycocalyx is on our thyroid, you'll have an immune response to the thyroid. That's called autoimmune disease. That's what an autoimmune disease is. It's a disturbance in the glycocalyx. The disturbed ID, uh, glycocalyx acts like a, like, an, uh, like a fraudulent ID card that flags the immune system. This little sliver of jelly on the surface of a, the cell, this glycocalyx, is a major player in all health and disease, and nobody's talking about it. This little sliver, it protects, it protects the cell from viruses and bacteria. The, the viruses and the bacteria have to make their way through the glycocalyx, which is like a forest of sugar trees, as we said has to make its way through this glycocalyx, and that slows it down. That protects the inside part of a cell. It electrifies the cell, the glycocalyx. Isn't pretty much every single thing that you can think about has to do with the functioning of a cell somehow affects the glycocalyx, which is why if you're a plant, disturbing the glycocalyx can be a wonderful strategy for protection. Chemicals that plants make do just that. They disturb the glycocalyx. They're called lectins. Now, I should also, I should, you're going to hear a lot about lectins. There's a book out now. I've got the guy, a doctor who wrote it, uh, The Plant Paradox, it's called, where he points out that plants create more toxins than meat and that plant toxicity it, it, uh, can be a huge under-recognized plant pro uh, uh, health problem and plant toxicity is really a lectin issue. But I should tell you, because you're, you're going to start to hear lots of stuff about lectins, if you haven't already, Not all lectins are bad. The body makes lectins. Lectins, uh, lectins are like glue. And the glue can be used for a lot of things. Glue can be very, a very functional thing in the body. I shouldn't say glue. So think of this, this, the stuff that's on the back of a, a post-it, like an adhesive. So adhesives can help cells move around. They can use adhesives to grip. They can use adhesives to, to signal different things. So adhesives are functional. Lectins are functional. Lectins play a role in the body. Cells make lectins, but they can also gum up the works. They can also disturb the glycocalyx, and that's what plants do. Plants have created, and seeds especially, but, but pretty much all plants have created for themselves a way of protecting themselves by secreting lectins that gum up the works of cells. And the, these lectins are found in all kinds of foods, but especially legumes and seeds. They're found pretty much in all plants, and they are uh, the source of the plant-related or plant-associated immune response or inflammatory response that happens when people eat things like uh, beans or when people eat certain vegetables like cabbage, for example, or uh, seeds. Seeds are especially problematic in lectins because nature really doesn't want its seeds being made, and that's what gluten intolerance is. Gluten intolerance is a lectin re reaction. Now, when you have a lectin disturbance at the level of the intestine, you've got some big problems. When you've got a lectin disturbance at the level of the intestinal cells, this is what's happening. The gluten is a lectin disturber. The gluten is a, 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 chemical, war, a chemical weapon, part of chemical warfare that the plant uh, dis, uh, practices against animal cells, specifically intestinal cells. And this reaction causes a big explosion at the level of the intestinal cell and that explosion creates holes and these holes allow the entrance of food particles into the blood and that's where all the problems come from that's called leaky gut leaky gut is a secondary to or follows a glycocalyx lectin response and why is this important because there's lots of things we can do there's lots of ways we can protect ourselves from this lectin response Especially not by, by avoiding the lectins. That's, the, that's obviously the best thing you can do is avoid the lectins. And that's why <clears throat> the uh, grains are best avoided. Flour grains, um, you know, the barley, rye, oats, and wheats, the brow grains get, oh, get all the press. But really, all grains are all seeds unless they're sprouted. Sprouting deactivates the lectins. That's why sprouting is so important. Sprouting turns seeds from a lectin-rich, dangerous, problematic food into one of nature's best foods. Sprouting uh, uh, dissolves the lectins and turns all of the stored energy in a seed into 
proteins and vitamins and valuable nutrients. That's what makes sprouts such powerful foods. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6210 is our number. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here today, if you're dealing with gluten intolerance or have a lectin issue, there's lots of ways that you can help protect your body from lectins. Lots of One of my favorite of the Longevity products, actually, is a great anti-lectin nutritional supplement. That's the Fucoid Z. That's one of the reasons why the Fucoid Z is such a multifunctional Nutritional supplement, uh, multifunctional product if you're selling longevity products. The Fucoid Z is a anti-lectin supplement. Fucoidin is an anti-lectin substance. Mucus, mucusy and slimy substances uh, are one of the ways the body protects itself from lectins, and that's why algaes are so important. Brown algae is in the Fucoid Z. Lots of ways to protect yourself from lectin, especially lectin in the digestive tract. We'll talk about those here in a sec. Call 866-735-2470 if you want to get yourself some Fucoid Z, or you can purchase it off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories and blog posts on all our websites. We've also got videos and the Join the Team link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Make a little money while you're doing it work out of your home, enjoy all the benefits of all the tax benefits of having your own business. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. So lectins are, well, lectins, there's, is a kind of a generic term for a, or molecules that have a sticky quality. The sticky quality can be used for good or it can be used for bad. It's a major player. All cells are making lectins. It's a major player in how cells communicate and talk to each other and do their business. But when lectins from outside the body, like plant lectins get in, they can gum up the works. And this is one of the ways plants protect themselves. Gluten, gluten intolerance is the classic example, but beans and legumes and peas and nightshades, uh, nightshade um, vegetables, uh, toma- the nightshade vegetables are tomatoes and potatoes and peppers. Uh, nightshade, nightshade vegetables exert their anti-health uh, effects for people who are predisposed to uh, problems with the nightshades via a lectin, ac- lectin action. Some people have problems with cruciferous veggies, broccoli and cauliflower. Again, uh, because of lectins, all grains and seeds are, uh, are packed with lectins, as I was saying before we went to our break. Bacteria produce lectin, by the way, and bacteria, uh, if you look at some bacteria under a microscope, you can actually see little lectin stick, little hairs, uh, little kind of hair-like projections, not hairs, but little hair-like projections that are coming off of a bacteria uh, that are actually lectins. And, and this is one of the ways that bacteria, like H. pylori, for example, if you've heard of that one, that's a famous bacteria that's responsible for ulcers, E. coli, Everybody's heard of that one. E. coli uh, can affect our cells. And basically, these bacteria uh, uh, secrete or release lectins that are like little pieces of Velcro that can attach itself to the uh, glycocalyx. And using slimy substances like the Fucoid Z can help loosen these bacterial adhesions. That's why algae and Fucoid Z and licorice root and slippery elm have such wonderful benefits for for uh, anti-lectin or for, uh, for antibacterial uh, for antibacterial effects or anti-lectin effects. Cranberry juice does the same thing. If you've heard of cranberry juice for urinary tract infections, that's a cranberry juice exerts its benefits by disrupting the lectins from the bacteria. Mannose is another one. Man, uh, mannose is a sugar that does the same thing. Sugar sugary compounds and slimy compounds are anti-lectin. There's one wonderful, wonderful slimy compound that's good for so many different things. It's, it's just endless. The benefits you get from this stuff is called aloe vera gel. Aloe vera gel is packed with anti-lectin substances, particularly something called NAG. NAG is a type of glucosamine, which, by the way, glucosamine also has anti-lectin properties. NAG 
is uh, N-acetylglucosamine is said to be one of the essential sugars. I, I don't really like that term, essential sugars, because it's kind of confusing. There's no real essential sugars. That's kind of a marketing word. There's essential nutrients. That's not marketing. That's science. Essential amino acids is science. Essential fatty acids is science. Essential nutrients are science, is science. Essential sugars is not really science. That's marketing. Yeah, they're important, but they're not essential because your body can make them. Essential really means that you have to have it in your diet. Essential sugars, you don't have to have these so-called essential sugars. Nonetheless, they're still important, and NAG is one of the most important. NAG is found in aloe vera gel. You've all heard of glucosamine. Everybody's heard of glucosamine. Glucosamine isn't, isn't similar. It's not technically said to be one of the essential sugars, whatever that means. But it has a wonderful health benefits. And one of them is it's anti-lectin. If you look under a microscope, you'll see that the glycocalyx is, is like, a, I call it a sugar forest. It's like sugar trees. And this, these sugar trees are uh, a, a great way, a, a site of activity or a site of disturbance from plant lectins. By using sugars like NAG, you can interfere with that lectin sugar response, that lectin glycocalyx response. It's like the NAG gets in between the lectin and the glycocalyx, and it kind of slimes everything away. This is how uh, these, these uh, sugars, these mucousy substances, exert their benefits. They get in between the lectin and the glycocalyx. You don't have to really supplement, by the way, with these essential sugars. I know there's a lot of companies that are selling supplements. There's one huge multi-level company that sells essential sugars, which is kind of funny to me. How they've made they made a business out of the probably was among, if it's not the most abundant substance on planet Earth, it's certainly near the top. I will go so far as to say these essential sugars and similar molecules that are similar to them are among the most abundant substances on planet Earth. And some multi-level company figured out that they could sell these things for a lot of money, and they're a huge multi-level company. You don't need to have supplement with essential sugars, so-called essential sugars. Eat lots of fruit, fruit uh, fruits and veggies. Actually, easy on the fruits probably, but eat lots of veggies. Make sure you're, uh, you're uh, eating mushrooms if you can eat mushrooms. Mushrooms are a wonderful source, maybe the best source of, uh, of these uh, uh, these essential sugars, so-called essential sugars, veg vegetables in general. You know, dairy is also going to get you some algae is a good source of these essential sugars. Aloe vera, that's, uh, just unspeakably valuable aloe vera is. not. You don't need to, just aloe vera just for healing. It's great for healing, but just as a tonic, aloe vera is, and the reason aloe vera is so powerful, the reason aloe vera is the king of plants or the king of herbs, and if you look at an aloe vera plant, it actually looks like a crown when it's grown, it's pretty cool how it, what it looks like. And it is said to be the king of herbs. And the reason it's said to be the king of herbs is because it's so rich in these, in these, uh, in these sugars. And you can tell it's rich in these sugars because it's slimy. It's, it's mucousy. Uh, aloe leaf has got kind of a, a, if you press down on aloe leaf, it's got kind of a, a kind of jelly feel to it. That jelly feel is your indicator that you're dealing with sugars, complex sugars not sugar, sugars, but complex sugars that have anti-lectin and healing properties. Anything that's got that kind of kind of gummy sort of a texture to it is going to be give you these kinds of sugar benefits. Slime is good. Slime is good for us. Mushrooms, seaweeds, algae, veggies, aloe vera. Great way to build up your your uh, make sure you have enough essential sugars and build up your sugar armory, your anti-lectin complex sugar armory. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the glycocalyx, what you can do if you're dealing with Crohn's disease or celiac disease or any intestinal problems, with which oftentimes involve the glycocalyx of intestinal cells, especially if you have gluten intolerance, or if you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com 
and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information about the longevity products, especially if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, 866-735-2470 is the number to call. And check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number here today. We'll get your calls in just a sec, and we do have lines open for you. From the Journal of the Endocrine Society, study finds high rates of type 1 diabetes near food swamps. Hot spots of type 1 diabetes in New York City are found in food swamps. What's a food swamp, you say? A food swamp is an area with a higher proportion of fast food restaurants. That's what nutritionists are calling it now, at least according to the Journal of the Endocrine Society. And food swamps, uh, or di- type 1 diabetes, is uh, found in uh, higher, uh, higher, higher amounts, or there's higher numbers of patients who have type 1 diabetes in food swamps, as well as type 2, uh, two, type two diabetes, too, obviously. But people think type 1 diabetes is really a big, different, kind of a huge, hugely different health challenge than type 2 diabetes, and it's not. Type 1 diabetes may have a different cause, but autoimmunity, and that's what a type 1 diabetic is, an autoimmune problem. But autoimmunity affects people even if they don't necessarily have an autoimmune disease. The body's immune system can attack itself. You can have, you can have immune attack and not have a full-blown autoimmune disease. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, as far as how you take care of yourself, that is, what's causing your type 1 diabetes. So autoimmunity begins in the gut. If you have a gut problem, whether it shows up as autoimmunity or not, doesn't really matter. You're going to have health issues. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's not an autoimmune attack of the pancreas. Type 1 diabetes starts off in the gut because all immune problems start off in the gut. Even though it's an autoimmune attack on the pancreas, it starts off in the gut. Autoimmune disease starts off in the gut. Guess what? Type 2 diabetes also starts off in the gut. So there's a lot of similarities between type 1, type 2 diabetes, and in the cause, in the way you treat it, it doesn't matter what the cause is in the way you treat type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If your mess, sugar, blood sugar is messed up, you got to reduce your sugar intake, number one. You got to protect your gut, number two. I'm not saying this, isn't in, this is not to be done in sequence. These are all important, but one thing you want to do is you want to reduce your sugar intake. Number two, you, wanna, uh, you want to uh, protect the gut by avoiding problem foods, whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes. You want to use probiotics, whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And number three, you want to use nutrients that help the body process sugar. Chromium, vanadium, the B vitamins. Diabetes to me is the most tragic of all health challenges because you can do something about it. It's almost like it's voluntary. And if it's type 1 diabetes and you say, well, it's autoimmune, I had nothing to do with that. Yes, you did. Lay off the foods that jack up the immune system. That's how you deal with all autoimmunity. Remember, autoimmunity involves the glycocalyx. It involves food attacks on the glycocalyx. It involves lectin attacks on the glycocalyx. And as we're going to talk about on our next Bright Side episode, it involves improperly digested foods and the glycocalyx. And that means that we have control over our autoimmune disease. And that means we have control over our type 1 diabetes at the level of blood sugar and at the level of the immune response. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll get your phone calls. This one uh, is from the uh, Medical uh, Department of Population Health Sciences at the Medical College of Georgia, Augusta University, I guess. Antioxidant therapy may reduce young women in type 1 diabetes. More type 1 diabetes stuff here. Again, get yourself on nutritional supplement program. Use phytonutrients, antioxidants. You can, get in two, you can get your antioxidants two different ways. You can get antioxidants from a nutritional supplement program, vitamin E, vitamin C, or powerful antioxidants. Alpha-lipoic acid is an antioxidant. Vitamin A has antioxidant properties. And make sure you're eating your fruits and veggies, especially your veggies, and especially the small fruits, berries, and the peels of fruits. The peels are where the good stuff is. Making sure you're getting enough antioxidants is not only an important strategy, of course, for type 1 diabetes, for, cardiovas- for reducing cardiovascular risk of young women with type 1, 1 diabetes. It's also a very powerful anti-aging strategy and sun protection strategy as well. 
All right, let's go to the phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Jim in Colorado. What's up, buddy? Good morning. How you doing, Jim? Well, I'm doing better, according to you. Okay, according to me. I, I yeah, don't know. When I, I met you. Really? Have we? When, when did you meet? When did we meet? Oh, Which in Jim Longmont, you? when Dr. Wallach was there. I'm uh, Mr. PRP. Ah, oh, Mr. PRP, yes. How you doing, Jim? Good to talk to you. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm on uh, longevity supplements, and uh, I've got more energy, definitely. Very nice. How long have you been uh, doing the supplements? Mm, about uh, not quite two months. Okay, and you're noticing differences. Yeah. Very feeling good. Better. That's awesome. What are you using? Which which uh, supplements? Uh, wow. I'm Lots. using the uh, the EFA pluses. Um, the uh, selenium, the the minerals that are in the bottle, I can't remember what that's called. Uh, Cherry mints. I was doing, uh, B, what is it, BTTs, and then I switched yeah. to this other liquid because it's a little cheaper than the, than okay. the BTTs. All right. So what's going on? How can I help? How can I help you today? Okay. Okay. I'm. Uh, I've had some questions. You told me to call back in or email you. I should probably should have emailed you, but uh, those blood tests that I paid uh, K for are uh, indicating that I have uh, type 2 um, kidney failure and uh -huh. a three times iron content in my blood. And I remember the doctor saying, you know, I'm really, you really need to get that iron uh, out of you because that's going to increase your aging factor and uh, it's, true. it's a heart, heart issue too. So It's true. Now, here, here's the deal. What's, uh, what's going on with the kidneys? Are you, uh, how old are you, first of all? 74. Okay, and uh, are you uh, feeling strong and healthy otherwise, or what's the deal? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, because you've yeah, got some stuff going so, on, yeah. definitely. you got some stuff going on. The iron is probably indicative of a liver problem. That's where I'd be guessing, and I'd be guessing that it's starting off with your blood sugar, starting off with your digestive system, and, and then your blood sugar. Uh, stage 2 kidney disease is not, you know, you still you still got some kidney function going, so now you're... You're, uh, you're, you're, you're catching it at a good place. You're lucky you're catching it here. Okay, so because you, you still got some kidney function. They tell you there's no cure for kidney disease, but what you can do with lifestyle changes and, uh, uh, and just nutritional supplementation is you can slow down the damage. You can slow down and maybe even uh, stop the damage or maybe even reverse the damage, really. Uh, and that's good. what you're looking for. So here's, here's what you want to do. Uh, well, we got to take a commercial break, so hang on, all right? Okay. I'm going to finish up when we come back. Okay. Side eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're talking to Jim in Colorado. Got some kidney disease going on. Jim, you there? Yes. Yeah. I okay. Am. So, so iron's handled by the liver. Whenever I hear about elevated iron levels, I think about the liver. Your doctor's probably correct that you want to get rid of some of that iron because uh, iron can be a pro-oxidant and definitely accelerate aging. Uh, it's it's iron is kind of a double-edged sword. You need it, but it's got to be tightly regulated and tightly controlled. That's the job of the liver. Whenever your iron just, when you ever have explosively high iron levels, I think of liver problems. Now, if you've got kidney disease, that makes perfect sense because both kidney disease and liver problems are part of what's something called uh, something called metabolic syndrome. Have you heard of this metabolic syndrome? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah so I have. That, it sounds like that's exactly what you have, right? Metabolic syndrome is a blood sugar problem. So. While it may seem like you got lots of different things going on, that lots of different uh, health challenges that you got to approach differently, and you go to this doctor for your kidneys and that doctor for your iron, and you know you, you got it. It seems like there's a lot of things going on, but there really isn't. You got problems with your blood sugar, and probably also problems with your digestive system because those always precede problems with your blood sugar. Focus on your blood sugar first. You probably, if you're 72, it's almost impossible for you not to have blood sugar problems. Uh, unless you know you're one one in a ten million people who is paying attention to how they're eating and controlling their diet and doing all the other things that we're supposed to do as as we get older, so it's very it's it's not uncommon. Work on your blood okay. sugar at this point in your life, seventy two. You know what? You don't really need a lot of sugar. You, you 
you don't need sweets is what I'm saying. You know, you need a little bit of sugar, obviously, to run your body, but you don't need a lot of sweet foods. So stay away yeah, from I've them. I've always been a, a craver, you know. You don't need them. Sweets. The, yeah. At this point, they're not your friend. You know, right. I, I, I hesitate to z- say zero tolerance on anything, but the closer you can get to zero tolerance, the better off you're going to be. You're going to add years to your life. Right. It really, at this okay. point, at the age of 72, it comes down to, do I want to have some years to my life or do I want to have <laughs> apple pie? Really? I mean, I'm right, and I'm not far behind you, but, you know, I know exactly what it's like. You got, we have these sugar cravings because their sugar is attached to our brain. We, our, right. neuro, our neurochemistry is keyed into how much sugar we're getting. And as soon as we eat sugar, we get a big hit of pleasure hormones. Yeah, it's like it's, an opiate. It's like an opiate, exactly what it's like. So it's not that easy, but it really the price to pay is not good. It's, it's right. kidney disease. It's elevated iron, elevated iron. It's liver problems. It's weight issues. It's libido issues. It's aging. So that's Should you I really got a, a blood uh, draw. You know, donate some blood to get rid of some of this iron. Chelate. That, go to chelation therapy. Yeah, you can do some. You could lose some. You know, it's always a good idea to get blood for sure. But I would do chelation therapy because you'll get anti aging okay. benefits there too. Um, in addition to losing the iron, it's just a great anti-aging strategy, chelation therapy. It's one of those things that if we really cared about health as a society, we would guarantee everybody got chelation therapy. It's that value. Are you talking blood chelation or blood oral chelation? chelation? Well, oral, oral? chelation oral chelation's okay, too, but I'm talking blood chelation, yeah. That's, wow. that's yeah, just get, get have a chiropractor. I that right now. Yeah, but... it's pricey. It's a little pricey. Then do the oral chelation and then give some blood. And then also make sure you're treating yourself like a diabetic. Do all the sugar stuff you, that we talk about on the program. Yep. Uh, chromium, B vitamin, zinc, vitamin A, exercise. Don't forget, exercise is a very important way to improve muscle sensitivity to sugar. When the muscles lose okay. sensitivity to sugar over time, sugar can build up. And, and that's another make – sure, making sure you've got some muscle mass there can be very helpful okay. uh, getting in the gym. And, then, uh, and also drinking lots of water after you eat sugary stuff can help yep. dilute your that's- blood sugar. Yeah, I have. I'm not a big water drinker, so I, I got. I got to really uh, get in on that. So okay, if you're if hey, you're uh, compliment, what's I'm that? actually 74. You're telling me I'm 72. I really appreciate that. That made my day. Ah, uh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for the call. Yeah, take okay, care. take Bye. care. Bye bye. All right, let's uh, let's move on to Sally in California. Good morning, Sally. Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Jim. Thank you so much for accepting my call. I really appreciate it. Sure. What's um, going on? I just, well, my son, he's 29, and he went to the emergency uh, a couple nights ago, and they gave him an ultrasound, and they found no gallstones because the pain was on his right side under his rib, and um, they gave him some potassium. And he was dehydrated, and they also gave him morphine for the pain on the gallbladder because of the gallbladder pain there. And he left, um, he went home, and then the pain subsided until he ate some sushi he hadn't eaten all day. And um, then he had an artichoke and some sushi, and the following morning, he went back to the ER where they gave him, uh, they gave him ultrasound, the hiata, the CAT scan, gonorrhea, nuclear scan, they gave him um, the delayed scan they give after that. In the test where they put the hose down the throat was the latest one that they gave him last night before he went to bed at around midnight for the photos, and they found no inflammation there in the intestinal tract. And the doctor came in, and he said that um, he's a very, he's a real doctor. He's a good man, and he said that he didn't want to have to take to remove his, his gallbladder if he didn't have to, and he said that that um, he's presently giving him just the IV in the uh, fluids in the IV, and he said that, um, okay, so he was given morphine like every four or five hours because he was in such excruciating pain, and now they're giving him Norco, and the pain feels better uh, when he's not eating, and the only thing that the test showed is that um, there was a, there was there there were no gallstones and in, the, in the gallbladder. And there was a blockage maybe in the, the neck of the gallbladder because of so what's, what's the bottom line here? What, what do you tell him? What's the, how can I help you? Well, well, I'm worried about him losing his gallbladder. And what, well, yeah, what you, should. You, sh- you should. You should. I can't say if he's how far along he is, but the first thing you want to do is you want to control the foods. Gall, gallstones are caused by slug, sluggish bile. 
bile, bile is secreted out of the liver, goes into the gallbladder, goes into the digestive system, and then it does a big circle back into the liver and the, and the, and the, or back into the gallbladder, and it kind of circulates around the body. And as it's picking up toxicity, as it's circulating, yeah. it's picking up toxins, it becomes sluggish. The toxins come in through food. Simple as that. So you got to control the food. Well, now, I don't there's know how... a wall. Yeah? The only, the only thing that those tests showed is that there's a, a wall, like a, a, a thickening wall around his gallbladder. A so thickening be... wall around his gallbladder. I'm not sure what that means, but it could, there could be inflammation there. But it doesn't really matter. The point is, is his, his bile is sluggish. So here's a couple things. Yeah. First of all, I, I, like okay. I said, I don't know how far along he is in gallstones or miserable pain, but if he can get, a, if he wants, he should try to keep his gallbladder if he can. Number one, watch for foods. Number two, start using lecithin supplements with all his meals, lecithin. Number two, uh, number three, make sure he's use, using bile salts with all of his meals. Number four, make sure he's using the ultimate enzymes with all of his meals. There's some bile salts in there too, by the way. And then also uh, apple cider vinegar with all his meals. So making sure that he's giving his body the precursors to bile as well as bile, making sure he's digesting his food at the level of the stomach. That's what the digestive enzymes will do. And then lecithin is, uh, lecithin is, a, component, uh, is a component of bile. And then also uh, uh, eliminating the problem foods will, will keep the bile from being so sluggish in the first place. So there's a lot of things he can do. But I just don't know how far along he is in, in gallstones. I can see why people do have their gallbladder removed if, they, if they're having a gallbladder attack, as they call it. But it's just setting you up for problems for the rest of your life. And if you can avoid it, you definitely want to avoid it. There's also a procedure that they do with sound waves, where they shoot sound waves at gallstones to help break them up. And that you might want to consider that rather than just having the gallbladder taken out. There's a, half a million gallbladders taken out every year in this country. It's absolutely <laughs> mind-blowing. He does. He doesn't have gallstones, though. He just had that wall thickening around. And when they gave him the, the hose down the throat and observed with the photos there, there was absolutely no inflammation in his intestinal tract. Uh, well, it's hard to believe that there's no inflammation in his intestine if he has inflammation around the gallbladder. Inflammation around the gallbladder means that the gallbladder is working too hard. Again, it could be due to sluggish bile because the, it's not pumping. It, it's having a hard time pumping. It's a, it sounds to me like a bile problem. Does he have food allergies? No. Food intolerances? No. No. How, how do you know? Doesn't. How do you know? Well, well, he, you know, he he doesn't have any like allergic reactions or anything when he eats. But when he did eat, when he came home from the emergency that one yeah, night he, before he went the next morning, the food is what caused it. So yeah. The pain subsides when he doesn't eat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's there's, the there's, it sounds to me like there's something going on in the bile system. Now, the inflammation, I can't tell you what the inflammation is, but I can tell you what it might be. And it might be that the gallbladder is working too hard. Again, that could be a bile problem, even if he doesn't okay. have the stones. Okay, so I, it's, any way you slice it, you know, I'm hypothesizing, I'm speculating on what the causes are here. But any way you slice it, you got to go back to food and digestive support. Anything you could do, and bile support. Anything you could do to support bile, as I listed, the things I told you about, eliminate problem okay. foods, and then work on the digestive system. It's a food problem and a digestive system problem. Okay, likely. Okay. Likely. Not, I don't know 100%, but likely. All right, I, I got to go. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for your call, Sally. And I apologize if I left you on hold. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 